What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about Kotaku, because it sounds like one of the internet's biggest gaming websites perhaps is about to be shut down, and not for a reason that any of us could have predicted. Now first and foremost, there's a lot in this story that's still being developed. The news is just kind of breaking, and I've been trying to dig into it because to me, this is actually a very, very big deal. The fact that this could even actually be shut down, especially against the will of the employees, is a very big thing that I think we need to focus on because this is a little bit of a gamer issue and it's a little bit of a free speech issue. But first, let's actually talk about what this is. So Kotaku is a huge gaming website, but they're kind of actually kind of mired in controversy because oftentimes they don't talk about gaming. They like to dig into politics and social issues and voting rights and all sorts of things that are outside their typical purview. But here's the thing, the reason they do that, in my opinion, is because they want the clicks. They're trying to throw out the widest range of topics to try and skewer a big fan base. They're trying to get millions and millions of people to get those eyeballs on their ads. I mean, that's kind of how all this works, right? Is whoever's getting the most attention is getting the most money, which gets them the most paychecks and keeps them working another day. Now, what makes Kotaku very, very different from other gaming websites, especially places like GameSpot and IGN, is that they're actually part of a union. All the people who work there, the writers are in a tight-knit group which basically lets them negotiate things like their own salaries, their vacations, their breaks, things like that. And basically, well, if you've ever actually worked at a big company, they don't like unions. If somebody's signing your paychecks, they don't want you to be able to actually communicate with a bunch of other co-workers and band together. Now, this union has definitely been a part of contention, but it seems like it may be actually leading to possibly the death of Kotaku, and maybe even this week. So what's going on specifically is actually an ad. An ad that popped up yesterday on Kotaku.com. Basically, everybody who started trying to click the website and looking at one of their innocuous little articles like Top 10 Super Nintendos, you need to play blindfolded or whatever like that. Um, there started to be these ads that would blast autoplay music. You couldn't stop it. Basically, you pull up the website, and as soon as you did, it would start just blasting the most annoying ads you can possibly imagine. Well, what's funny is that the writers and stuff noticed that every comment was saying, screw these ads. And so they themselves published a big article saying, hey, we're really sorry about that. Because Kotaku actually had a full writer's freedom law, where they were allowed to write about whatever topic they wanted, and their bosses couldn't take it down. Only the CEOs and the people way at the top had permission to to remove whatever they said. And that's where things got particularly spicy because the article did disappear. This, which was a very timid little thing saying, hey, stop these crappy ads, suddenly vanished. It completely disappeared. And a lot of people started to be like, why is it that the company that owns this website so offended by them speaking out? Why is this such a big deal? Well, I actually think that it pertains to something very close to it, which is something that happened over at Deadspin. Basically, Deadspin is a sister site. It's owned by the same parent company, and one of their authors was fired yesterday for writing about politics, and it's a news site all about sports. Well, think about this. What is it that Kotaku has in common? Obviously, the same people own it, the same people are working there in a way. What is going on? Well, I think that we can actually connect this dot. All the writers that work over at Kotaku have suddenly started tweeting about these really cryptic messages about steering their ship into rocky waters, or possibly talking about, it's been a good run and hopefully we'll be here at the next sunrise. What do these messages mean? Honestly, I think that they were given an ultimatum. I'm currently theorizing because we don't know, this is still currently blowing up, but it seems like perhaps Kotaku was actually told by their new parent company that just bought them out and all their sister sites, they were perhaps told, hey, only write about video games, nothing else, none of the other crazy stuff, you stick to one topic. Now I'm of two minds about this. First and foremost, it makes perfect sense. I mean, if we're being honest here, the reason that the parent company even purchased Kotaku is because they're trying to turn a profit. They want to spend $10 to get $100. That's what all these investment firms want. That's what anybody wants, is to try and maximize money for minimizing work. That makes sense, right? 
Well, what happens if your product is suddenly so controversial, just as many Kotaku articles are? Almost everything that comes out from their big giant reviews to sometimes their talks on particular games and what they may find offensive manages to ruffle a lot of feathers, which can lead to a lot less clicks. What happens when people start boycotting to Kotaku? I mean, not to be incredibly morbid, but there are people already on Twitter who are celebrating the downfall of Kotaku, and I don't think that these people are completely wrong. They want them to stick to the safest topics possible, and also what they can monetize. I mean, if you guys actually have been watching my content for an extremely long time, uh, like the 300 of you who were subscribed like five years ago, you'll remember I used to do a book review every week. I would actually speed read a book and then tell you if it was good and bad and do like an in-depth review. And these got like 25 clicks. Nobody cared. They were very fun for me to do, but they also took a huge amount of time. So eventually I stopped doing them because I could tell that my audience didn't really care, which is totally fine. So I steered back to gaming only topics. I don't really kind of skew outside of this. But there is a second side of this coin that I think is definitely important to talk about, which is that this is a little bit creepy that these people who once had so much creative freedom are now being reined in just because some millionaires told them to do it. This is part of the reason that I'm extremely glad I have never worked at any of these gaming websites. Not Polygon, not IGN, not any of these people, is because the idea of having a boss that can tell you what you're allowed to talk about that seems really, really creepy. And what's going on over at Kotaku right now is basically just a perfect distillation of that. Essentially, these people are signing your paycheck. These guys way at the top, they are literally the people who are making sure that your employment continues to exist. So if Kotaku is actually trying to sit down at the table and say, no, you're gonna pay us a lot of money and we get to talk about whatever we want. I sort of understand why they may be getting fired and why the business may be not happy with the business business's existence. The key thing here is, I think that I, I'm not happy. I'll be honest, I don't want Kotaku to be shut down. Sometimes they say stuff that is incredibly stupid and it really, really annoys me, but they also do some incredible journalism. Some of the best leaks, some of the best things that are actually said come out of Kotaku. And I know what you may be saying, well, Dreamcast guy, these writers could just work for themselves. They could go to Patreon, they could become freelancers. Here's the thing, Kotaku actually secretly provides a tremendous amount of legal barriers. They have a lot of free speech laws that allow them to publish all those leaks. They're allowed to actually put all those things out there that get spread and quoted by everybody else because these major companies are not able to backlash. They're not able to actually shut them down. Yes, they can do things like Bethesda actually has boycotted uh, giving any review codes to Kotaku, but they managed to persevere. If all these writers suddenly lose their job and they have to just try and run a tiny blog again or run a YouTube channel, things just aren't quite as black and white. Like, uh, like everybody loves Jason Schreier. Obviously, Jason Schreier still has me blocked on Twitter, so I don't see a lot of what he says. But Jason Schreier has actually, he, he can't make YouTube videos. Like, he can appear in YouTube videos and stuff. But the thing is, if Jason Schreier actually leaked a bunch of assets or concept art or a lot of the stuff that I'm sure crosses his desk, companies could take that down because... On YouTube, we have the DMCA, the Digital Millennium, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, where basically, if I say something that is considered uh, copyrighted or restricted or not allowed information, those companies can legally remove my content. I could fight them in court, but that would be very long and very expensive. Right now, Jason Schreier is able to be the world's best video game leaker because of the protections of Kotaku. Without that shield, it's a lot harder to hold the sword. Lord. What does this really mean? How's it going to turn out? What is this going to mean for tomorrow? Honestly, I think that Kotaku may be shut down. I think it's quite possible that in this age of uh, evil investors, it's pretty much possible that they may have just purchased Kotaku. That way they can fire all these high-priced writers, bring a bunch of cheapos in, and make an even bigger profit. Well, I guess we're all going to find out. Um, i got to finish packing up my suitcase. I'll be honest, I haven't even finished my laundry. i got to do that. I love you guys a bunch. Hopefully I see y'all in California. Um, top 10 Thursday is about to be done. We're going to be counting down the top 10 worst horror games. It's very funny. Um, thank you so much for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming.
Man, what a mess. All right, time to jump on the plane. Man, I, I really get nervous about flying, so please send me some good vibes. I, I don't like airplanes. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.